Hi, I'm Mitch, and welcome to the Restoration Road as we continue our series, Street Smarts from Proverbs. You thought I was going to laugh, didn't you? <laughs> I was waiting <laughs> for street marts. I was praying all night. <laughs> we, One more street mart. We had a, a few terrible Now we're going to have to play that out. He take. kept laughing. He couldn't do the intro. He couldn't really? do it for about yeah, five minutes. I couldn't, minutes. I couldn't do the intro. He messed up street smarts and said street mart. Street mart. <laughs> and then <laughs> no, no matter what. new business, street marts, it went down a whole other path. Was, I was laughing so hard I couldn't contain myself. You ever have that? It's like laughing in church is what it was like. You oh, ever have that happen to you? Oh, yeah. I want to talk today about wise counsel. Hmm. Have you ever sought wise counsel? Shirley, do you ever go seek wise counsel? Seems like everybody comes to you for wise counsel. Oh, I do. Actually, I do. I have some prayer partners that um, we pray together all the time. And when I do hit a glitch, uh, it's, it's either them or my pastor. Mm. That's powerful. We're going to unpack um, the power of that. And then also how it can go awry a little bit if you're not careful. Well, how about you and wise counsel? Do you seek wise counsel? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, when the scriptures talk about, you know, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Um, yeah, that's my whole life story is uh, just trying to surround myself with yeah, knowledgeable people, you know, spiritually, you know, strong, you know, uh, you know individuals that I can lean on. Uh, as you know, we have our spiritual advisory board over at Empowered. Empowered Volleyball Academy spiritual advisory board. Yes, which Mitch is the official partner of. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, you know, different, you know, Dr. Cosby, different uh, people in my life who just really just shaped and molded my, you know, where I am today. In fact, Dr. Cosby, who prayed to, with you to surrender your life to Christ in jail uh, and then mentored you uh, through your time in prison. Were you in prison seven years? Correct. Seven years. Um, actually, didn't he come up to Fort Wayne when you moved and sort of hand you off to Kelly Bird? Correct. Because he said, I'm not going to be here all the time. And I, thought, I think that's one of the coolest things on discipleship, mentoring, wise counsel. Yeah, I had a great meeting with uh, Pastor Kelly, and it's it's been probably six, seven years now that, uh, yeah, kind of slowly was handed off to, to Kelly Bird, and, yeah, he's been a part of my life and been pretty instrumental ever since. The first person I prayed with to surrender his life to Christ while I was volunteering full-time at Black Hawk Ministries um, had a drug addiction past and actually the court made them come to uh, places of faith uh, to kind of learn and grow and um, I had to sign that he was there and I didn't get him discipled and he had a couple steps backward in that process and I thought to myself that's spiritual malpractice I will never mm. do that again mm. there there's great power in discipleship one-on-one -on -one. I thought coming to the group was would be strong enough but it wasn't so I'll I'll rarely pray with someone to surrender his or her life to Christ and then not get them connected with someone farther down the faith which is the value of the wise counsel we're talking about you probably give wise counsel a lot but do you ever seek it still after all those decades in ministry constantly really oh yeah I some of my richest friendships are a couple, three gentlemen who are a decade or two older than me that have been through the wars and the battles. And it's, uh, I just, I love every moment I have with them. I can sit there and just listen, 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 because they've been down the path mm -hmm. and they're, they're very humble people. And you that usually get, goes together, doesn't yes, it? Yes, you Humble just get a different perspective uh, of life. It, what we were talking about yesterday, you know, the being fully informed, you know, gathering that information. It's just, and, and even in business, I, I enjoy sitting down with businessmen, yeah. successful businessmen. When I started um, Youth for Christ, the first thing I did is I met with five what I considered very successful leaders, mostly from this community, a Dick Freeland, a Jim mm -hmm. Kelly, a... Um, Eugene Habegger, Char Binkley, I mean, just, just people that had had great success and took lots of notes. And there were two things that came out of the conversation. I was looking for common threads. There were two things they all said. One was learn how to say no because you'll have so many opportunities and wow. understand your priorities. That was the other one, um, proper priorities. If that's you get, how you know how to say no. That's right. You get those two things lined up and you got that as your core, you can make a lot better decisions. Because you can't be all things to all people and you can't do everything, so keep focused on that. My dad never taught me how to say no. 
there was never like an auction he didn't like. So uh, <laughs> I had uh, uh, detox from that a little bit. And it was establishing our priorities and what we were about that I knew what I should say yes and no to. And then I, outside of my business, all the things I was saying yes to uh, just about put me in the tank. So let's unpack Street Smarts from Proverbs. Proverbs is one of the most tightly outlined books in the Bible. Its, its purpose is in uh, the first six verses of Proverbs, and the theme is verse 7. And it has 12 words or 12 principles, 12 concepts, uh, 12 pearls that it's based on. And today we're going to look at wise counsel and we're looking at the four components of it. It's tech contextual usage throughout Proverbs and it's first guidance from the wise. In the battle of inter interpersonal conflict, two people uh, at odds with each other, um, two objects attempting to occupy the same space at the same time, we need the counsel of more than one confidant in order to experience success. And Solomon said this, uh, will let out of the gate with it, Proverbs 24, 6. For waging war, you need guidance, and for victory, many advisors. Mm -hmm. Wisdom in a multitude of counselors. You've talked about how you have more than one. Uh, Shirley, you talked about how you have more than one. Will, you talked about how you have more than one. I think that's powerful to not just have one, but a few. I've had times where I've sought wise counsel and I got conflicting advice, but I realized it was me probably not communicating the situation as well, let's say to the second one. And so that person didn't know the background well enough to, to give me what maybe the first one had done. And so I think it's really important for us um, to have more than one. Um, Solomon said, the, for the lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. That's 1114. Um, our best efforts to plan our way through conflict, I believe, will fall short without the input of others. Solomon said, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. I got three verses already, and they got many advisors, many counselors, right? Mm -hmm. That's 1522. They also communicated the wise way to plan for conflict management. He said, make plans by seeking advice. Prioritize. Make your priorities by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. That's 2018. Um, I talk about in the book a story of uh, King Rehoboam and how he had conflict and how he responded. And he didn't do it so well. So he's our example in the book as we go through the four points uh, uh, of not getting it. Uh, a king or a prince, let's say, would have a group of guys around him and they were like his contemporaries. And Rehoboam ended up listening to them more than the wise counselors uh, that the king had. So I, I think that's significant. I used to see that a lot where people would have their posse, but it's not really wise counsel. Um, can you think of a time when someone gave you wise counsel, you acted on it and it worked out great? because it was guidance from the wise. Just with my business, just all the different <clears throat> components and facets of my business, you know, me alone could never have done any of it. Um, but God had always, at the right time, you know, had brought the right person with the right knowledge, the right experience, and the right connections to be able to make each step of the way uh, happen. And so whether it was you know, using wise counsel when we were looking at potentially buying the facility and then I remember you know, making, you doing that. Yeah, and making the connection with the right people, the right investor. Um, and, you know, here we are today, all from, you know, wise counsel. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd say really all of my success when it comes to business, when it comes to sports, I mean, you always have a wise counselor and typically your coaching staff, um, you know, your family growing up who's pushing you to, to excel. We talk about us seeking wise counsel, but when you have those relationships, sometimes that wise counsel seeks you. I've had three people in my life who live in different states that I had that relationship with, and I would get a call from one of them that would say, this is back before texting and emailing and all that, <laughs> um, what's going on? God's laid you on my heart. And one of those was a huge transition in my life. And I thought, wow, Holy Spirit really does that stuff. 
uh, another one called me out of the blue and said, uh, man, God's just led me to pray for you. Is there something going on? And that was uh, the time I thought God was prompting me to sell my business and go to seminary. And uh, uh, another one during a conflict, which was nobody would know, um, called me out of the blue. He didn't know. And he said, man, I was just praying for you so hard this morning. What, what was it? And I'm telling you, whenever that's happened to me, there are specific things that are going on, and that is powerful. So sometimes uh, we seek wise counsel. Sometimes they seek us. The second part, uh, so we got guidance from the wise. Wise counsel is guidance from the wise, but it's deceit from the wicked. So we're Boehm's, Rehoboam's got his posse, and, and they're telling him what they want him to do because they're going to benefit from it. Um, Solomon says it this way, he cautions, the plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. Deceit always seems to have a little bit of the truth, but it's twisted. And there's a, a, a self-centered benefit probably that the person that's giving you the advice would want. It'd be like, well, if you were going to look at facilities that you were going to buy and the guy who owns one of the facilities is telling you, well, this one's by far the best. I think you should buy this one, you know, that kind of thing. Right. I'm sure it happens all the time with your vendors probably too. Right. Yeah. Um, so have you ever had advice? It's, now it's deceit from the wicked, so... It's, it's probably, a, by definition, not really wise counsel. It's like pretend wise counsel. Have you ever had advice that was bad and you acted on it? <laughs> <laughs> I was good until you said that second part. Yeah. <laughs> acting on it, I feel like it turned into more of a confessional thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we aren't going to name names. Yeah, okay. I can remember getting counsel from somebody and but my husband says no no and I was going ah uh, well why not you know in my mind because I'm I'm one of those well they just want to help he says no and as it turned out he was absolutely right mm. And so I have to say he was right. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you say that into the camera? <laughs> a little louder. Just a little louder, please. Yeah, he, he, he was name. right. Oh, if you're listening. <laughs> My husband, Christopher Lewis, was right. <laughs> Don't you feel better, Shirley? <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> Let me humble myself here. But yeah, yeah, he was absolutely right. Yeah. And so, and he was another... I mean, he really helped me. I didn't listen to his counsel for a long time, and I paid for that too in another situation. And uh, he kept he kept telling me, he kept telling me because I'm, you know, everybody's good, everybody's, you know, got good intentions, and not so much. And so uh, I'm learning to listen to him more. Uh, yeah, confession. <laughs> that that is the hard part. And I think you've already mentioned it, Mitch, godly, wise counsel. You know, and I have people that I'm having these discussions with, when they don't have really any skin in the game, when it's pure, that there's no mm. selfish motives, they're not trying to get anything for themselves. They do it because they love me. They want the best for me. They're giving me 100% their best shot at explaining things to me. It's when I'm having conversations with somebody and halfway through I, I sense... They're trying to figure out how this will also benefit them. That's when I start struggling. So I love those people in my life that I know I could call right now and they're going to be brutally honest, tell me the truth, and they got nothing in the game for themselves. That's, that's refreshing. I don't think the guy at the shoe store was wicked, but I was getting a pair of running shoes and the guy said, oh, yeah, man. You should get those soles that like curve a little bit. That's more the natural stride of your foot. <laughs> so I go out and I start running in these things. And I'm telling you about five days into it, everything from my waist down is in pain. And I don't get it. It's tight and in pain. I can't do it. And I finally asked somebody and they said, well, let me look at your shoe. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I don't know if I supinate. 
pronate. I, I get them all mixed up. I know I run on the outsides of my feet. And um, they said, no, you know, you're, you're like killing yourself. So I got a pair of shoes that had a neutral heel and were straight on the sole on the bottom. I could not believe the difference. Just amazing. But I don't think you were deceitful and wicked, shoe store salesman. <laughs> but that is the way it could work. That is the way it could work. So we need to recognize and refuse deceit from the wicked. Wise counsel is guidance from the wise, deceit from the wicked. Third, it is success from the Lord. Solomon said, there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can, can, that can succeed against the Lord. In seeking wise counsel, I think we need to remember that we're seeking the wisdom that comes from the counselor who knows what's best for us and not just what a person thinks. Um, the Father has given us the Holy Spirit and his proper name, Jesus said, is counselor. So I had to remember when I was uh, in the role of a teaching pastor, that when somebody would come to me and seek wise counsel, and I, and I still would do this today, I'd say, we got to figure out what the Holy Spirit's telling you. Now, we'll, we'll check that out with the Bible, um, but you know what's going on in your life. I'm like a, a few steps away peering in, and I only know as much as what you tell me. So we're going to try to see what the Holy Spirit is, is prompting you so you can discern how to be spirit led. Um, and the grid that we run that against is the Bible, other wise counsel, and then of course the life and teachings of Christ. Um, have you ever had a prompting from the Holy Spirit that you just couldn't shake and then you finally yielded to do it? Well, yeah, and, and it took me about a month to obey, but... Uh... <laughs> That's pretty quick, really. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. uh, actually, uh, I told the story before that that God had in my prayer time, um, He instructed me to clean out my bank account and give it to another ministry that was struggling. And uh, after a lot of prayer, and I might have fasted a little bit too, uh, but I I felt very strongly that God was saying to do it. And the things that were going through my mind was, if you hang on to it, how would you be able to just, you know, uh, live life knowing that you're holding on some, to something? And will that be more important to you than God himself? And so when I looked at it and I go, you know, I love you too much and you've been too good for me to hold on to this. Money could never be my source, you are my source. And after repeating what the word says and knowing what the Holy Spirit was saying to me, I, I gave and I did what he asked me to do. And, um, and so that was the leading under the Holy Spirit. And it was God who actually did it through me because as I wrote that check, I was breathing deep. <laughs> But I, I got through it. And so, I, in fact, when I called the people to, to give it to them, I says, I need to talk to you and I need to talk to you now because I need to put this in your hand right away mm -hmm. because I, I didn't want the, the, the enemy to give me all these reasons why not to do it. Mm -hmm. But the Lord and the Holy Spirit, why not? When I was volunteering at Black Hawk as a teaching pastor, a friend of mine who was a couple years ahead of me in school uh, came in and he he looked like kind of stressed and he had in his hand a fistful of papers and I said what what's going on he said I have driven around this church where he attended um, about six times and he said I can't tell you the power the clarity of the prompting of the Holy Spirit that I'm supposed to give these checks to this ministry I said, oh man, are, are you sure? Like I didn't want to take advantage of the guy, you know? I said, tell me about it a little bit. And he started to tell me about it. And I said, that's probably a Holy Spirit prompting. I've had those before. I, I get what you're saying. And uh, it was a very similar thing. And it was kind of like you described, he, he almost felt this peace that he couldn't describe after he did it. 
um, that, he, that he didn't have. There was like a tension there um, before he brought him in. And uh, it's amazing. I think God's vision will always be followed by his provision. Um, when the Holy Spirit is, is prompting us, I think, uh, you know, a month is pretty quick when he's asking you to empty your savings account. But I think we need to become rapid Holy Spirit responders. I remember I was uh, trying to practice this because God was prompting me when I would pray and he'd give me ideas and I thought, whoa, um, maybe I should be doing those. And I started to do those and they would work out. And I thought, wow, I am gonna try to be a rapid Holy Spirit responder. And so I was on a board of a nonprofit and we were interviewing somebody that was overqualified for the position, but was a perfect fit at his season in life. And he looked at me and he says, Mitchell, you haven't asked anything. I said, you know, I'm really trying to be a rapid Holy Spirit. He was farther down the journey than I was. I said, I'm really trying to be a rapid Holy Spirit responder. And I said, it's it. You're the guy. I said, I I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to say yes. And um, there was really no question to ask because it was obvious that, that he was that person. So becoming a rapid Holy Spirit responder, I think, would give us uh, tremendous peace. Uh, when we're getting that counsel from the counselor himself. And again, we need to run that through the grid of three things, the Bible, other wise counsel, and of course, the life and teachings of Christ. So we had wise counsel as guidance from the wise, deceit from the wicked, oh, success from the Lord. <laughs> That's the one we just talked about. And finally, it's sweet from a friend. Uh, Solomon said, Oil and perfume make the heart glad, so a man's counsel is sweet to his friend. Have you ever had a friend share with you something that was hard, but it was actually at the end of the day for your benefit? Often. Really? Well, it's the beauty of accountability. I mean, I love my three, four guys that I spend time with almost weekly, that we have a mutual accountability system in place and we've journeyed for so long, we've read scripture for so long, we know each other so well that there, there's, there's just no reservations. You just have the discussion. And again, you can just be totally honest with, here's what I'm hearing, you know? There's something about when I'm sitting across a table or a room with another person who has my interest at heart, who wants the best for me, that wants me to be successful at my marriage or work or as a believer, you, you listen well and need to take that. I was thinking as you were just talking about the Holy Spirit, I, I studied the Holy Spirit for six months last year. Wow. I mean, that was my study. Wow. First, I was blown away by how many scriptures there are that talk about the Holy Spirit. That was my first aha. But the second one and how it's changed, I was gonna say changed me, how it's changing me is I'm so more into, the Holy Spirit speaks to us all the time. We're just not very good listeners. It's a learned skill to it, hear it his is. voice. So now, and you have to be intentional, so I can be driving to my office and turn off the radio and the Lord will prompt, he'll bring three names to my mind. And I used to go, okay, and I say a little prayer. You know what I do now? I call them, mm. I, I call them or I text them, how can I pray? The Lord brought you to my mind, I wanna pray for you. Wow. You have anything specific? So I'm finding that one of the deeper levels of ministry is just when God prompts it, he's doing it for a reason. I've learned uh, for me, the Holy Spirit is my best friend mm -hmm. uh, because he'll only tell me what the Father tells him to tell me. And I have confidence in that and so I do talk to other people, but I'm more readily, uh, I go to God the Father and I listen to the Holy Spirit. And everything the Holy Spirit tells you, like you said, the Word of God will back it up. And as long as I know it's in the book, I'm okay, <laughs> I'm okay. Right. And so it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing developing that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus did all he's gonna do. He sits next to the Father. He's still making intercessions for us, but he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell us, to be in us. And I don't wanna yeah. ignore that relationship yeah. with him. See, God isn't a technology. He uses the Holy Spirit. It's like a text, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram. He just does it with the Holy Spirit. See, it's 
Well, I think that's kind of the key too. And when you're trying to figure out wise counsel, and then sometimes you got deceitful counsel that has you know, ill intentions. And I think that confirmation that you get from the Spirit, because I think we've all had someone come up, you know, the Holy Spirit really led me to come and tell you that we need to do this, this, and this. And it's like, well, when the Holy Spirit tells me that, and then we'll sit down and have a conversation. <laughs> That's but right. Right, yeah, right heard now, the Holy times. Spirit is not yeah. leading me down that path. Right. A pastor of a huge church was in my car, and we were going to the airport, and I was talking through with him, a prompting that I had, and then we started talking about what other people advise and things like that. He said, Mitchell, I've had people cast stuff into me out of me, mm -hmm. tell me that the Holy Spirit's telling him this, and I just tell him what Will said. He said, until he confirms the new, I'm sticking with the old that he made really, really clear to me mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago. I, I had uh, a pastor tell me once that when someone brings you something and said, the, the Lord told me to tell you this, he says, God can talk to you too. So when they come, it should confirm Yes. what God has already spoken yes. to you. Mm -hmm. it's, it shouldn't be something brand new. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with him. He's your father. Mm -hmm. He's going to speak directly to you mm -hmm. so they can confirm what God is saying. But he said, they will not tell you something that you have never heard from the father. Mm -hmm. And I've remembered wow. that. Well, there you have it. <laughs> this is powerful and wise counsel can absolutely transform your life. So I want to ask you today, I'll read from the book, will you seek guidance from the wise? Will you recognize and refuse deceit from the wicked? Will you succeed? Are you willing to succeed with wise counsel from the Lord? And would you love to taste that sweet wise counsel from a friend? If so, we just invite you to engage with the Word of God, the people of God, and the Spirit of God to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit's still small voice as you pursue Street Smarts from Proverbs. Good day, people all over the world. Um, I'm DJ Nelson, Jamaican professional volleyball player for the national team, and I've played for the past four years overseas. Um, I'm here promoting Mitchell's book, Mitchell Cruz. It's a great book, Street Smart from the Proverbs. I recommend it, you guys read it. You can learn a lot, get a lot of wisdom. Um, you can see some testimonies in here, some great testimonies. Um, I'll be reading it myself. And please, just take a book, read it, indulge in it, and pray about it, you know, ask for knowledge and wisdom.